borderline personality <laughs> disorder. Um, okay, so today we're just journeying around the idea of borderline personality disorder. Um, I don't know if you know much about it. Um, uh, actually, uh, it's actually more common than we actually realize. So, what is borderline personality disorder? It is um, it's a common mental illness and people affected have difficulty managing their emotions and impulses relating to people and maintaining a stable self-image. Borderline personality disorder can be highly distressing for the person affected and often for their family and friends too. It can be confusing and easily misunderstood, but uh, borderline personality disorder is a very treatable condition. So it's got to do with your emotions and your, your impulses and and uh, also making irrational decisions and, and being just irrational. So this is basically what it's all about. It's, it's just, just you, you don't control your emotions, you don't control your thoughts or your, uh, your actions. Um, so the facts about it is 1 to 4% of the population are affected by it. So 1 to 4% late adolescence or early childhood is when symptoms usually appear. So late adolescence, early childhood, or adulthood is when this appears. So, um, and women are more likely to be diagnosed. How unusual. Causes are not yet fully understood, but are likely to be a combination of biological and life factors. And again, I, mean, I know all the women are rolling their eyes, but yes, more women are affected. Same as with bipolar and same as with depression. Um, yeah, so I don't know if it's because of living with us. But, uh, Pretty sure that's it. So, yeah, most people with BPD that recover after diagnosis and effective treatment. So it's like you, there is recovery, there is help. But the thing is just, first of all, to diagnose it and to actually just get, get the help that you need for it. Um, so, so there's help, ladies. Okay, <laughs> the myths. There are a few myths, like we talked last time about myths um, around uh, addictions. Myths is people with BPD are, are not bad. So people with BPD are often labeled manipulative and attention-seeking. Um, while the things they do may cause distress, this behavior results from the symptoms of BPD. Please don't go home today and say that I've got this. <laughs> because, um, because my husband keeps on, or my wife, or whatever, she keeps on saying, I am I'm manipulative and I'm controlling it. So, okay. so this is one of them. Right? Uh, people with BPD can get better. Um, borderline personality disorder is treatable. Okay, so. So um, I don't know why they put it as a myth. Probably a myth is that it can't happen, but um, it is treatable. People with it can recover well with good treatment and support. And support is again counseling too. So um, if you in your practice maybe focus on, on some of these disorders, um, can be good, great in support groups. Um, not only support groups for people with it, but also support groups for families and spouses. Um, so there's a something good to think about in when you run your own practice. Not all people who, who harm themselves have BPD. Uh, people self-harm for many reasons. It isn't exclusively to, to borderline personality disorder. So uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about self-harm specifically. We're going to focus on what self-harm is and also why people self-harm. But um, you don't necessarily will have BPD. Um, to be a person that self harm there are different factors involved in self harm um, You will find also that research shows that there's been a huge increase in self harm um, So uh, we'll just that, that's tomorrow's topic. Um, symptoms. All right. So now make notes. Uh, people with BPD have experienced some, but not necessarily all of these symptoms. Feeling empty and low self-esteem. Low self-esteem. It's a very strong emotional type of, of disorder. So um, your self-esteem is very, very low in this regard. Um, you feel empty. You feel like you just can't give anything to anyone around you. You're not good enough. That sort of thing. 
Um, paranoia or emotional detachment. Uh, paranoid, um, especially when it comes, especially we get women relating to their kids, getting paranoia um, that something might happen or, um, yeah. Emotionally detached, um, don't <coughs> become unemotional with people, don't show emotions, uh, don't connect to people. And anxiety about relationships. <coughs> um, it's interesting that it's always about relationships and that also links to their feeling of empty, the low self-esteem. Uh, people who feel like they've got low, low self-esteem, they've got nothing to offer, also have this issue of relationships. I can't be in a relationship, I can't offer anything to anyone, um, I'm not a good friend, I'm not a good partner, I'm not, not a good, good wife, I'm not a good husband. That sort of things um, are um, part of what, what's happening there. Okay. Then as we said, they also self harm <coughs> and threatening or attempting suicide. Um, and that's also part of the irrational thoughts <coughs> and irrational things happening there. Um, anger, moodiness, and they're all irritable. So the small little things can really make them upset, can really cause issues. And um, so that's just some of the symptoms. Um, <coughs> extreme behavior. People with uh, borderline personality disorder may exhibit extreme behaviors such as repeated self-mutilation, self-harm, or taking overdoses of medication. There may, be, there may be a variety of reasons for such behavior. Okay, so also, they, as we said earlier, they, they don't, can't control the emotions. Um, they get really like, they make also decisions which are really not well thought of. So they can quickly just get a quick fix. Quick fix will be to take heaps of medication even just heaps of medication to, to treat a headache. Uh, not necessarily always to commit suicide, but um, I just want to get this medication because I, I've got this headache, I want to get this headache over, so I'm just drinking a lot of tablets to get it done. So they make irrational decisions. Um, so that's part of it. Their behavior is sometimes really extreme. Um, Self-harm also make me feel better. I cut myself. I feel better. Um, it's just an effect of, of what they do. Um, the behavior is a symptom of the disorder and requires professional help as well as education and support for family members. Um, if you have a family member or someone close to you that's got this, it's also important that the, the spouse, the rest of the family, the children, everyone get involved in this process to understand what's happening. Um, why is the person acting the way they do? What is causing this? Because also, when, uh, especially a person, let's say a mother who's got borderline personality disorder, well, maybe the kids will do something and she's not happy and then she'll say stuff like, I'm not a good enough mother, I'm not good enough for you, um, you, don't, you don't value me. And the kids started feeling bad and the kids start, it's got an impact on their self-esteem but if they understand it's only a disease, it's not them. They don't cause this. It, it might help them in, in the family. Also, also husbands, um, your spouse need to know what's happening. Because if they say, I'm not a good, good wife, um, then it's the, the disorder. It's not them that is actually, or you that's not a good, good spouse to them. It's part of the disorder. So that's what's important if you have clients with this to actually also get the spouse or the, the partner or the boyfriend or girlfriend into the counseling room for a session so that you can discuss this whole issue also with them. Okay, so causes. It's, it's a bit unclear with most of the, the, the disorders we talked about, but um, psychological factors, biological and social factors. Biological, again, we talk about, is it in the family? Does it run in the, the family? Um, psychological, what's also happening around them, also socially? What's happening in the environment they live in? If, if they maybe live in an abusive re environment, if they grew up in an abusive re uh, environment. Um, if we look at, at the stages of Ericsson, um, 
also of Maslow, um, are there some of those things that actually wasn't there when they were growing up? Um, we don't see, as we said, we don't see the symptoms until um, late adolescence or early um, adulthood. But all these things add up to that. So sometimes if you get a client who's got this, there are some, maybe some exploring to do. Um, look at genograms, draw, draw a genogram with your, with your client. Um, to see um, if there's actually repeated behavior. Maybe a parent or a, a grandparent also had these, these functions. Right? So, and then traumatic experiences. Um, trauma cause a lot of, of, of um, disorders, a lot of fears, a lot of things happen because of trauma. So if your client had a traumatic experience, that might also lead to them having a borderline personality disorder. So that's, um, it's part of the uh, the causes. Uh, so it's good for you to actually just spend time with your client and just explore what's happening in their life. Uh, just with your normal open questions and close questions, showing empathy and definitely show and make them, let them also feel that there's no judgment from your side. Um, because they are really, they've got low self-esteem, they are really emotional, so you need to be very caring and very supporting to your client in, in that regard. Uh, treatment can reduce borderline personality disorder. Treatment can help people manage, reduce, and even eliminate symptoms. The behavior associated with this condition means that people with borderline personality disorder often alienate themselves. Uh, so they often withdrew or alienate because they sometimes are not a nice person to be around. I don't always want to be a person around a person that's moody or controlling or manipulative or all these things we've told. And so, so people move away from them. They lose friends because of their behavior. And, and that's part of the alienation process of happening, being, being lonely. And that also has an influence on their self-esteem and um, feeling I'm not good enough, no one wants to be my friend, no one wants to be around me. So there's this, it's like a vicious cycle for a person that's got uh, borderline personality disorder. So treatment is really important in this regard. Uh, effective treatment is psychotherapy. Um, <clears throat> the doctor or psychologist talks to the person about the symptoms. They discuss alternative ways to cope with the symptoms. Psychosocial rehabilitation to help people learn social skills. Okay, so that's where we come in and talking to them about social skills, about how you treat other people, think before you speak, um, don't make everything personal, don't take anything, every, everything people do is not personally directed towards you. Um, so helping your client also to view things from a different point of view um, helps in this case. And medication, um, this may help reduce associated symptoms such as anxiety and depression. So again, we're talking about, it's, they all fall in the same category as what we talked about this week, anxiety, depression, um, borderline personality disorder is, is linked to, to these sort of, um, sort of illnesses. Okay, treatments also, mood disorders, for example, bipolar and depression. So this is where it occurs in, in those things. So if you've got bipolar, got depression, it also it's in them. So if you've got a client that suffers from bi from bipolar or from depression, even anxiety, um, also they might also be borderline personality disorder person because they all occur in the same range of, of things. Um, we also get it in eating disorders, people with eating disorders, um, their viewpoint. Uh, I'm not good enough, I'm not skinny enough. Um, that's why uh, a lot of people who's got borderline personality disorder struggle with bulimia, um, anorexia. Um, I'm not good enough. Their viewpoint of themselves is not. Um, they will look in a mirror and they will see an overweight person. Um, although there's the only skin and bone, when they look in the mirror, that's what they see is an overweight person. That's their, their view of themselves. And um, that's sort of part of 
how we treat it with um, with counselling is also to change their their belief system. CBT works well with that. Okay, alcohol and drug abuse, and it's essential that each of these disorders is recognised and treated separately. Right, so don't. So focus on depression. Focus on anxiety. So it's quite a lot of work that you need to do when you have a client with a borderline personality disorder. Okay. Things to remember, people with borderline personality disorder often have trouble relating to other people. They struggle to relate to other people. They, they live in their own world. Um, as we said, some of the symptoms, manipulative, controlling, um, take everything personal, low self-esteem, um, low self-worth, all these things is, um, makes it difficult for them to relate. Um, they've got extreme behavior such, such as self-mutilation um, or self-harm, as we in general language talk about it. Extreme behaviors are involved in this. Um, that occurs when, with mood disorders, okay, so Okay, watch out when you've got a client with mood disorders, depression, anxiety. That, that might also be part of BPD. Right. Is borderline personality disorder hereditary? They say like major psych psychiatric disorders. Um, it involves both the genes and the environment. So genes and environment plays a role. So if you have a, a, a parent who had this, there's a big chance you might get it or might not get it. It's like not a definite. Right? So same with all the others we talked about. There's a chance you'll get it. If one parent had it, there's a chance. If both your parents had it, there's a bigger chance that you're going to get this. Um, but it's still not a definite. Okay, how do I help someone? How to help a family member. When a family member or partner has this, uh, it is easy to get caught up in the heroic <coughs> efforts of trying to just please and just do stuff to just keep everyone happy. Um, so, but uh, you need to know that each person has their own needs and their own stuff, and you need to s sort of take control of the situation also for yourself. So don't start doing stuff for them. Um, let them also take control of things around them. Um, if they don't want to do stuff, especially with depression, we say that get up and do something. At least get out of bed, get dressed, wash your hair, uh, do something. Same with these disorders. If they feel like I'm not good enough, I'm not this, I'm not that, I can't do it. You sort of let, they must do something. Um, so get them part of, keep them in your household still. Don't move them out of your household. Keep them part of your activities. If you want to go somewhere, invite them with. If they don't want to be part of it, just keep on inviting them because it's got an influence on their self-esteem. Um, right. This is his, um, family members, friends and family members, that's got the three C thing is number one is I didn't cause it, I can't cure it, and I can't control it. So um, there's no way that you as a family member, and that's something that when you work with, with a family of people with one person's got, got the disorder, make sure that they know that they did nothing to, to cause this. Okay. Um, although mom had a few huge outbursts and blamed the kids for things they never caused it it's a it's a disorder it's caused by a lot of factors it can also be hereditary as we talked about is you didn't cause it the family member and friends didn't cause it i can't cure it so no matter what i do i can't be the one that cures it um, there's there's medication and there are counselors and psychologists available that help with this process and also I can't control it. It's not how I act. Um, I need to be very careful that I don't make her upset or make him upset. I must be very careful in the way I deal with things. Um, there's no way that you can control when they're going to get an emotional outburst or not. 
um, that is that the VCs are in, in your counseling, especially when you work with the family, you've got to focus on these things and say to them that those three really are the things they need to remember about having a family member with this. Um, communicating with someone is listen actively and be sympathetic. You listen and you be sympathetic. Just listen to the story, even if it doesn't really make sense. Even if you're really upset about it. I mean, they go out of control and blaming people, blame you as a family member. You've done this and you've done this and you said this and you're not helping and all these things. Just listen and be sympathetic. Don't fight back. Right? Um, focus on emotions, not on the words. Right? So focus on the emotion, not the words. Especially if a person gets really, really emotional or really upset, the words come out might be really damaging words. Right? It's like if you're really upset about something and you go and tell someone you're really upset. If you if you calm down a bit and you go later, you might have a different result. So when you've got a borderline personality disorder family member, listen to the emotion, not the words, because the words, mostly they don't really mean the words, they're speaking out of the emotion. Um, do not, do what you can to take the person, um, to make the person feel heard. Okay, so make sure that they do feel that you've listened to them. And that's great, because that's what you're supposed to do as a counselor, is actually be the person that listens. So when your client comes to you, make sure that you listen. But not only you listen, but they know that you listen. And how do we know that? Uh, how do our clients know that we listen? Out of, uh, Ivy and Ivy. <laughs> Micro skills, paraphrasing, eye contact, body language. Um, uh, being present, all those things help your client to know that you're listening. Right? Um, try to stay calm even the, when the person is acting out. So, not only talking about at home, but I'm talking about in the counseling room. If the person really gets upset and really like, even come up, come to you and say, you don't know what you're doing and, and attacking you verbally, always stay calm. Stay calm. Don't you get upset. Um, afterwards, you can quickly phone your clinical supervisor and say, I need to speak to you. Um, but always stay calm with your client, especially a borderline personality disorder client. And then talk, talk about things other than the disorder. Talk about things other than the disorder. Okay. Talk about life too. Um, how, how, how is life going? How are things going with you at home? Um, how are you and the kids? That sort of thing. Right, so uh, I've got there a uh, thing there. Uh, <coughs> think some of us can relate. Ladies say to the man, if you were my husband, I'd poison you. i poison in your coffee. And the man says, if you were my wife, I would drink it. Um, so uh, I think that's what happens in some of our homes, especially when we have a PT. A um, sorry, a, a borderline person, a disorder person in there. Sometimes you would like to drink the coffee. Um, all right, so don't ignore self-destructive behaviors and suicidal threats. So if the person is threatening about suicide, don't ignore it. Okay? Don't go around and say, oh, you said that before, or oh, you said that before, or oh, they just take it serious. Also, um, self-harm. Self Take it serious. I mean, it's like uh, it's not a lot a thing that to be taken lightly. It's really serious stuff. And if you believe your loved one is is at a risk of suicide, do not leave the person alone. Even if you've got a client, when you've got a client at risk of suicide, don't let them go home. Um, rather phone an ambulance and get them the care and the help that they need. Okay. Um, so. It's important that we, we act. Uh, rather, uh, rather let the ambulance service come in and take control and, and do, a, do a survey and, 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 and assess the person, then uh, you send them away and, and something happens. Right, supporting, um, setting goals. 
When supporting your loved one as a recovery, it's important to be patient and set realistic goals. Change can and does happen, but it takes time and it changes it happening in the brain. So it's the, the circuits of the brain that need to be rewired. It's the thinking, it's the thought patterns, it's the behavior patterns that need to be looked after. So that's part of the process. And that doesn't happen overnight. It all takes time. Um, baby steps, right? Small stuff. Don't force them to change quickly. Don't expect a quick change. It takes time. Um, and also support um, is challenging and it's rewarding because there are lots of ups and there's lots of downs in the whole process of recovery. Um, also, you as a client, you will have, or as, as a counselor, your client will come in one day and you'll feel like, whoa, we are so, we're working with this, this is, this is, we're getting somewhere and the next appointment, the client will come back and you'll feel you're back to square one. It's up and down. Um, so, lots of patience is, need, patience is needed, lots of support, just being there, making sure that they know that, that you hear them. So, um, five familiar fights. Uh, having borderline loved one means having the <coughs> it's deja vu all over again feeling. So, um, lots of fights about the same sort of thing, so the same behavior of things happening. Um, it's over and over and over again, the same sort of thing. Um, you just need to sort of just stay calm. Also, the, you as a counselor, they'll come in with the same issues over and over and over again. You'll feel like, but we've dealt with this before. It's like, it's like a copy of last week's um, session, but it's just, it, that happens a lot. So you need a lot of patience when you work with someone who's got this. Um, um, the, it's your fault fight. Um, this person says, once my borderline girlfriend snapped at me for looking through some DVDs the wrong way, I asked her in a very even tone of voice, what are you getting upset about? For the rest of the day, she sucked and gave salt and gave me the silent treatment. Okay, so that's just something simple. He looked at the DVDs the wrong way, and she was upset with him, and he tried to find out what did he do wrong because he didn't know and she was really upset about that so it's just uh, it's your fault sort of fight thing um, blaming the other person for doing stuff and we all sometimes you don't know what you did wrong like this poor guy he didn't know how, how must he look at the DVDs uh, and she didn't want to tell him because he knows what he did wrong sort of thing um, the worst part is when you ask them what have I done wrong and they say you know and then you have to try and figure out what on earth have I done wrong. Um, so, yeah, so just, uh, that, this is the face of borderline personality disorder. The person looks very upset and very cranky and, and not happy. So, um, the heads I win, tails you lose, fight. Um, the, my mother is the master of double binds. When I call her as soon as I get home at the end of my day, she's short and rude because she's in the middle of something. But if I wait until later in the evening to call, she says, I am um, in the accustomed way. You have, I've been, you've been home so long, why didn't you call me? Um, so it's like, you cannot win. Um, it's like, she phones her mother earlier, or phones her mom when she gets home and her mom says, I'm busy, phone later. And when she finds later, mom says, why didn't you find earlier? Because, so it's, like, it's a can't-win situation. But it's still important that we always stay calm. Also, take it from the, the, the point that it's not the person, it's the disorder. It's not the person that's doing it. If they didn't have this disorder, they would have acted differently. So, so don't... Um, the projection fight, there's nothing wrong with me, there's something wrong with you. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm doing nothing wrong. It's like, what's your problem? I'm happy. Why are you so sad? Why do you look like that? Why do you do like that? Why do you act like that? Um, it's nothing, it's not me. Um, I don't have a problem. Uh, so, watch out, you're going to get that a lot. And you'll get that in the counseling room. Your client will come to you and say, and blame everyone around them. Um, they get upset. They don't like me. They don't want me to do this. They, 
and, and in that you also need to be very calm, very relaxed, and challenge them in a very, very friendly manner. Otherwise, they're going to go home and they're going to say there's something wrong with that counselor because they don't know what they're doing. Okay, so um, <laughs> they pro then they're going to project it again on you. The I hate you, don't leave me. I'm totally confused. My border personality boyfriend broke up with me on Tuesday, then on Friday wanted to know what I was doing over the weekend. I remember one night we had a great time together and had great sex. Then he started a fight over nothing the next morning. Um, so it's like it's confusing. Uh, they confuse. <coughs> and they confuse the people around them. Like, <coughs> broke up and asked what are we doing? Um, have we broken up or what's the story now? Um, so it's like you'll get that. And that's why it's important to track your, your conversations with your clients too because they're going to be confused in the stories they tell you. Because you'll have to sometimes have to do the reflection question where you say, okay, let's just clarify this. Let's reflect on what you just said. Not for them, for you. Mm -hmm because you might not know what's happening. Have they broken up with them or haven't they? Do they want to or what's going on? What's happening in the story? Uh, so it's, it's confusing, but just as confusing as it is, they also confused. Um, that's part of their disorder. And then the testing part before I recovered from Portland, but I would like to tell you, I'm just testing to see how much you love me. <coughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> I'm testing my people around to see how much you love me. It's like that one we saw the other day, um, the woman that organized her own funeral um, <coughs> to see what people will say at a funeral. So she, she was there hiding at the funeral to find out what people will say, what they think about. It might like a huge test on everyone around. And, um, so, yeah, the she testing fight. I think we get a lot of our friends test us. If you, if, are you still my friend, are you not my friend? That sort of thing, so. Uh, and again, they'll come and test you to see how good counselor you are. <laughs> they might read up on something and come and actually ask you questions about that, sort of trying to see if you're really a good counselor or a bad counselor. Um, so. We can help see your doctor and there's a helpline to, um, there's even an <laughs> online support chat support which is great so you can talk to people <coughs> online and say help um, I don't know what to do um, and there's um, peer support forums and stuff and if you want to open a, a support group that'll be great uh, for this sort of disorder uh, so that's the end of borderline my little chat about borderline so let's chat about borderline uh, before we all go on working